Good morning. Um, my name is Woodza Pierrelis. I am originally from Port-au-Prince, Haiti, um, but I live in Miami. I am a fourth year architecture student at Tuskegee University. And welcome to my project. This is Tikai Resort. Um, the name um, centered around how it's supposed to be a community space for the people and that the people are building it. So the Tikai Resort is a tropical ambience located in Labadee, Haiti, on the bank of the Norton Coast. Tikai Resort is designed with an array of openings for sunlight, surrounding vegetation, and wooden materials throughout to create a sustainable experience for the guests. The lobby space is used to educate on the concept of the resort. There is also gift shops, bookstores, and restaurants, bars on the first floor catering to the guests. The second floor, you have the conference room, the guest rooms, and the third floor, you have get the gallery space and more rooms. So this rendering here is pretty much show you the entrance. Um, you have the courtyard space, and you can see that this is the front facade of the building, which we'll talk more about. And you will see with my 15 elements for my present studies, mood board, material board, um, and more how this came together. Starting with the cultural and lifestyle. So the three main things I, want, I wanted to focus on for the cultural and lifestyle is the porch space, which is used as an outdoor living room for the Haitian people. So this um, porch is usually very large and very extensive so that people, because that's where people sit and drink their coffee, read books, and things like that. You have the garden, which is uh, essential for any Haitian house, like I mentioned for um, this is where we get our natural foods from. And lastly, you have the laku. Laku is pretty much the courtyard of, um, well, it's pretty much just translation for the courtyard. As you would see here, this would be considered the laku space. Um, so that courtyard is used as a place where there's childcare, where we will share food and any activities can really take place in this. So those three elements, you will see how I implemented them to my design especially from the porch space, the garden, which is surrounding the resort, um, edible garden, which is surrounding the resort, and the laku, which is that front entrance space where visitors could sit. So moving on to the aesthetic and forms. So um, Haitian architecture, they are fairly rectangular, um, rectangular in, their, um, in their floor plans. So what I did is I took that shape and kind of like shifted a little bit so you could have this concentric formation. Another point is the colors that they use in Haitian architecture. It's very island, very pastel. So with my design, I wanted to make sure that I incorporate not only the airiness of the island, but also the colors that comes with that, the cultural colors, the rich colors through um, from paintings, through through, um, um, through natural, natural things surrounding us. Um, another thing that I wanted to include was the hand carved trimming, which is known in Haiti um, a lot. As you can see in this picture, you can see this is what the hand carved trimming looks like. So this is pretty much used to ventilate the space. And throughout my space, it's literally over, over the building. So there's enough air coming through. And um, another point, Another thing that I took from the um, gingerbread style of Haitian architecture is the double doors that they used, um, the, double door that, the double doors that they used and the steep roof. Moving on to spirituality and philosophy. So like I mentioned before, the front porch is a multi-purpose space and sometimes you'll find local churches doing services um, in their front porch. And the garden is also used for the community. For example, um, with my house, we have a garden um, literally all around. And that garden is used for the church. Like we will have church members that come in and get fruits and we get fruits from theirs as well. So this is just more, more than a garden, but, is, but it is really like a farm for the community. So moving on to the material and sustainability, one of the things that I wanted to focus um, um, a lot on for this project was the material and sustainability, sustainability portion. 
So tikai pai, which is the literally translation for a small hay house, is made out of um, palm leaves, bamboos, and straws. As you can see here in this image, you would see that the, uh, um, the frame is made out of bamboo while you have um, two women mixing the adobe with their feet. And there's another woman here, she's using the adobe and the hay to kind of create the structure for the house. So this technique will be the same technique that I use for the interior walls of my design. And finally, the process and the cost. One of the major things that we know that Haiti, um, we have a lot of hurricanes and earthquakes. So one thing that um, the new generation is trying to do is find a way how we can beat both. So a way that they, dis in, they, they did in this president study is that they used, they connect the foundation to the roof. So as you will see here, they connect the bamboo from the top of the roof, roof to the foundation so it could make it more sturdy. And that's one technique that you will see that I use um, throughout my design. And also another process I would say that I want to use is the waddle and dab technique, like I mentioned before, which will be used for the interior walls and the exterior walls you will have um, wood joist structures and all over you will find wood. Um, the floors is wood joist um, structures as well. So moving on to my president studies. Um, so I started with the Hotel Austin in Haiti, which is a very known hotel. Um, what I really like, loved about this president study is how they use the, the ornaments throughout the building very strategically, using as light and things like that. So another thing is that um, I liked the different shapes that they created, such as the balcony here and the rooftop. The second president study, which is um, the house of Louisiana, Louise in Haiti, they built this for, and this is the president's study that I pretty much use for um, my 15 elements. So one thing that I really appreciate about this is how sustainable this president's study is with the wood structure, the double doors, the wall and dub walls as well. So lastly, for the traditional president's study, um, I took this image here, um, which is pretty much more of like an interior President study, I liked how they used the straw for the roof. For the modern president studies, um, this is a project created by students abroad and in Haiti. So their goal was to pretty much do the same thing that I'm doing, is to find how to create, how to mix the old and the new, bringing a spin to the gingerbread style houses in Haiti and things like that. So what did it is they did this completely out of bamboo. Um, it's a conceptual project. Um, they did it completely out of bamboo and they made breathable walls, which mean like plants can grow from these walls. Um, and also it serves as ventilation. This present study here is pretty much the same thing as the first one that I wanted to create is to kind of have that breathable wall for, uh, um, for the structure. Lastly, for the president study, um, I took this one because I like how they use the hay as, as it is and make it very organic. Um, another thing that I realized is that they used, they connect the, 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 the roof to the walls to the foundation, which will make it sturdy for the resort. So moving on to my concept. Um, so I started, I used this famous statue in Haiti, which is called Negmao by Albert, who is also an architect and a sculptor. So this statue right here symbolizes the revolution of the, the revolution of Haiti and how it happened. So the conch shell, which was used as an instrument, I mean, it was used as an instrument to gather runaway slaves and to alert them that um, the enemies were approaching because, of course, we, there was no technology back then. So this shelf, whenever the slaves heard this noise, well, the runaway, the runaway slaves heard this noise, they would know that the enemies are approaching. And I wanted to use this because it talks about our, about where we came from and where we are now in our resi in resiliency as the Haitian people. So starting with um, my concept, I did pretty much different um, sketches of the different elevations 
um, of the statue just to see what architectural elements that they speak to me. So with this one here, when I sketch it to me, it looked more like a floor plan. Um, with this one here, it looks more like a tower, but it was that wasn't exactly what I was trying to go for. So what I did is I focused on this sketch more specifically. And with this sketch, you would see how I use it as my as um as a staircase for my resort. So started here, the two connections that I did with this statue is the connection of the mouth to the conch shell and the connection of his hand to the spires. So the connection of the mouth to the conch shell create a sound. And without, um, and in order for that sound to happen, one, they had to cut the, um, the top piece of the conch shell. So when you cut that top piece off, it create a spiral, which you can see down here. So when it create that noise, that noise come out this opening space, which I felt was very important. It could be either like a courtyard or outdoor space or something like that. The second connection was the connection of his hand to the spire. The spire are these right here. Um, and the spire kind of reminded me of this, um, uh, um, of the high pitch roofs. So I need to combine those two things together and create a concentric shape. So I deconstruct the statue a little bit and I did like a basic, the basic shapes of the statue. So you have this circle right here, which represent his head and this shape right here, which represent the conch shell. So this circle right here, I thought immediately this could easily be used at something as a drive through or courtyard or anything like that. And of course the conch shell, which was used to gather people, I was like, okay, this could easily be used for, for the whole resort itself. So this is uh, the first sketchy preliminary floor plan that I did with the insurance, with the resort and the beach. So this is an elevation of how um, I cut it in half, pretty much kind of like go underground in a way. And you will see that when I explain with my renderings. So moving here, I did different, I did different iterations. So you could, so I could just see what I'm working with. Um, with here, as I said before, I wanted to combine a mixture of the spear to the hands and how that, how they work together. So I started with by using the basic shape of a gingerbread house. Um, and I put those spears along to see what it creates. Um, and then I kind of connect, I kind of want to connect them all together to create this offset shape. And then more, this one is more for like the functional part of it. Um, you will see furthermore when I talk about how this all comes together. So this is my mood board. Um, with the mood board, I wanted to create a tropical, luxurious feeling in a way um, because it's nearby the beach is very open, it's very natural. And as you know before, for the materials board, I want to use bamboo for structure, um, adobe and hay for the construction of the walls. Starting with my floor plan, um, so like I said before, so you would see here from the previous sketches that I did, I kept the concept of the, of the head as that entrance courtyard space. So out here I have a courtyard and this will be like almost like a drive through for the residents. This is the entrance. And as you walk in, you walk into the lobby space. Um, from the lobby, you come in contact with the stairs, which is the central focus of the design and the stairs almost reminded me of the sculpture um the statue and how his feet stretch wide so i need to bring that into something so when you see the renderings of the interior you would see how the stairs kind of remind you of the statue and how his body is stretching in a way so from the stairs you have on this side the rest side you have the the uh, um the staff in in residence space um, these two things right here are the gift shops um, there. And you have back here the restaurants, the bars. Um, and back here is like an extended pavilion where with a view to the beach in a way. So, 
on the second floor, when you go up the stairs, you have the conference room right here. And we have a total of six bedroom on this floor. One, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and you have a balcony, uh, courtyard space, which residents can come together and commune. So with this rendering, um, I hope you see how everything that I was talking about come together. So this is the entrance of the resort. Um, right here, you see the courtyard space where residents will enter or pretty much rest. Um, you could see how I use the double doors used in traditional, um, traditional gingerbread architecture house. Um, you can see how the combination of the opening of the shell here, and you can see the different shapes with the spear and the hand and that it creates. So I, um, I took this rectangular shape and I really shifted about 10 to 20 degrees to create this concentric shape. Um, as you can see, this would be used, this right here would be um, the hand carved trim that are known in our in Haitian architecture. And it's also what I call a breathable wall. So it could make the structure very, so it could be very ventilated because it's hot in Haiti. Um, so yeah. So this is the back of the rendering. This shows the, um, the guest rooms and the balcony space and the gallery space combined in two. Um, so you would see this would be like a master suite almost. This would be the ultimate master suite because it gives you a bigger view. And you have other rooms here which have smaller porch areas. So down here would be like an outdoor pavilion um, garden, you know, or outdoor pavilion for the cafe. So this is all the way in the back. You could see the inch. Um, this is the back. Um, and this is where guests would sit, drink, eat, have a view of the water, or go for a swim or anything like that. And right through, you could almost see the stairs. These are my interior renderings. Um, we're gonna start with the bedrooms. So this is the guest bedroom. You could see, even though it's tilted, it's still very open. Um, and there's a lot of space for guests to enjoy. Um, this would be the glass door. Um, that that opens to the courtyard or gallery space this is a view from the um restaurant to the outside you could see that there is the water here with the vegetation in the back and things like that and this right here is the lobby space this is the lobby space you could see how the stairs kind of take into the shape of the statue and it stretches in a way so the lobby space, like I mentioned before, will also, use be, will also be used as an exi exhibition space showing Haitian art or even, talk about the, uh -uh, or even talk about the concept of the resort. This is, um, we have um, wood, wood panels for the gift shop store because we don't want everything, I didn't want everything to be closed. So that's why I incorporated that. This is a bag view of what the stairs look like. And this kind of reminds me of the shape that his knees created as he um, blew the conch shell. So moving on, this is more renderings of the entrance and other details. You have, um, I wanted to include an art piece here to bring a little bit more of the culture in the design, this art piece is really um, a marketplace. So it kind of specify on the cultural part of the richness of Haiti in a way. This rendering here is showing a more detail of the porch space um, that I talked about earlier. And this is in the lobby space. This is the front desk area. You got the sitting place here and this, um, mural almost mural glass lit situation here um throughout the lobby and in the conference space um i just want to say thank you to 
madly for this experience. It was amazing. I've learned so much in CPDI than I've ever learned in my entire life. And I just want to say thank you to um, all professors, madly, um, Mr. Edward, uh, Mr. Joseph, and David Hughes, who really guide me throughout this design process, telling, guiding me each step of the way. And I also want to give a special thank you to uh, my significant other, Trenton Scott. He helped me with the floor plans and other things throughout this design process, making sure that it was all cohesive and stuff, you know, things like that. I just want to say thank you once again to my classmates for really empowering me and teaching me things that I never knew before. Um, and also to the people who allowed me to connect with them because being in architecture school, I did not know that I could have such connections. And now through CPDI, I realized that, okay, this is possible. You know, I could become who I want to become and what I want to become in architecture. So I just want to say thank you to everyone who have helped me, who have guided me throughout this experience. And I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you.